Hello everybody and today we're doing pastel landscapes. I've chosen this landscape, it's a path in Halnica, which is in West Sussex, so I highly recommend you visit, it's absolutely lovely. Um, it's near Chichester and I like uh, landscapes where there's a path leading the viewer's eye into the painting. And here are my materials, just a few words about pastels. With pastels you're kind of stuck with the colours you've got, so you have to uh, be able to do optical mixing. So sometimes you just want that colour and it's just not there. So you have to adapt and it leads to quite an impressionist style of drawing or painting. Um, and so I've got my pastels here. These are various ones I've accumulated over time and I put them in little compartments for the pinks and the blues and various other things. So I can just grab them when I need them. Another very useful thing to have in your kit is, um, well, not necessarily this one, but I think Rembrandt also do this, a dark set, because sometimes you just do not have the right tone. Um, and these are unison pastels. Um, they're really soft and lovely, as are these. Uh, these are French, which Claire gave me. There's some, uh, I don't think what they are, but they're very soft, but really chunky. So quite hard to use sometimes. And, um, but if you're just getting into pastels, quite a nice set is something like this. This is the inscribed pastels, 48 half sticks. You get a good range of colours um, and they're good quality. They're a little bit harder than these. I think the higher quality pastel you get, the softer they are. And they're just like drawing with butter, the soft pastels. But these are perfectly fine and very nice and uh, they're a little bit harder. Uh, but they don't create mounds of chalk dust, which sometimes cheap pastels do. Um, and this pastel landscapes is something I want to do more of in my life, so this is a good opportunity to try it out uh, because I absolutely love drawing, pa uh, drawing pastels, particularly uh, portraits and life. Um, it's a very immediate way to get colour into your work and I really love them. So we're going to crack on, I think. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put these somewhere useful. What's also quite good to have is somewhere to put the pastels uh, you've been using. So I generally have a um, uh, source or something around so I can just grab the pastels I've been using. So I'm going to put my darts over there. And as with all pastels, what I like to do is start out with charcoal. So I'm just going to put my picture here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm actually working in natural light because I found my strong light was bleaching out the colours. So this is just natural light. <clears throat> and you can tell what the colours are going to be. Um, and I've edited myself out so you can see the whole picture. So I'm just going to put the horizon in, which is sort of there. In fact, this is a bit wider than the image. And then I've got this um, little area of light at the end of the tunnel, which is a little bit off centre. So I'm just going in there. And then I've got my path, which comes down here. And with charcoal, um, the nice thing is that it raises very easily. So I've got some this bank of whatever it is, grass and things, and this nice road coming over here. And looking at where the road hits the, your frame is quite useful, uh, and, and where it's going to. And obviously it diminishes due to perspective. And then over here, I've got all these dark trees. So this is where the dark is. And there's some dark over here. And then we've got some dappled shade there. And I'm just sort of putting these on so I know where I'm going. <clears throat> and the reason why I like using charcoal oops, is it's quite easily erasable. Um, and I often use it for the darks in the picture too. So with this, I think I'm going to block in some nice dark green. So out of my, past, uh, my uh, dark set, I'm going to use quite a dark colour here. And I'm working on red. The nice thing about pastels is that to use coloured paper. I, you can use pastels on white paper, but I'm, why not use them to their advantage where you actually draw with the light and use uh, coloured papers. And I'm using a red paper here. It's a Canson um, pastel paper, I think. Um, there's Canson, there's Fabriano and uh, Murano selection. And these are big sheets, which I managed to get from Hobbycraft, which is now open, which is good. Uh, and so I'm just putting on uh, some green on this red, and it really has a visual ping, and it will actually intensify green. So I've got this nice dark greeny um, gradient type of colour, and I just want to block in the darks. 
I tend to work from dark to light with pastels because then you can kind of sculpt the light on top. And I'm using the side, you can see it's really quite quick. I want to put on a layer of dark here. And there's a layer of dark over here as well. And I'm going to pick up a, I'm going to pick up something rather fiendish. I think this is even darker. No, that's a dark blue. So I'm just popping some dark blue in there as well to intensify the darks. And over here too. And where's a little bit over here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to, is that the same colour I've just used? I wonder, you know, it's a bit lighter. So I've got a slightly lighter colour here. I want to go in there with these. And these have all still got quite a blue tinge. I'm just trying to find my darkest dark. I've got a really nice dark blue here. So I'm just going in there. I'm just putting some darks in there so I can actually use them later. And I don't seem to have any dark brown, but never mind. <clears throat> so I'm just picking up my posh pastels over here. I hope they don't fall off. Put my picture there, and I'm going to have a look for my darkest dark. So is that the dark blue again? Mm, yes, it is. So I want that in there. And a little bit of dark brown, but I think that's going to be too light. And again, it's finding this tone. So I'm going to actually going to be reduced to using black. Oh, no, that is a dark brown. That's good. So the colours mix on the paper. That's what's nice about pastels. So I'm just going in here, blocking in my darks. So that's this dark brown. I think it's dark brown. Could be black. I just want that tone to be there. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to start looking at the lighter patches of the drawing. I'm going to pick up this rather nice colour, it's kind of an olivey green, so I just wanted something there and I'm just not pressing too hard because these are such soft pastels, I'm just going in there and trying to layer up some colour. I'm just looking at what's going on here, but I really want to get those dark patches in. I think I am going to try and just crack on and put the nice darks in. So I'm looking here, I don't want uh, too much light, I want to draw the, uh, draw the light on the dark areas. So here we've got some sunlight, <coughs> so a rather dappled shade. So I'm actually using a rather lurid purple in here, which looks blue on this paper. No, it's going to be purple. So it goes over here. Let's put a little patch in there, a little bit in there, and maybe a little bit there. And then I want to pick up some of my nice greens. So I've got this one here, which is pretty light, actually. I'll be pastels age. So this, I don't know how old it is. It seems a little bit harder than your average. So I'm just putting some areas in here where I want the lighter bits. Uh, and over here. And then I want a little bit of what I would consider kind of burnt umber color. And I'm just going to put a bit on here. I want the purples provided the dark, and this will provide the colour. I'm layering up colours and again putting the darks in first. I just might put a little bit on there to know I know it will mix in with the lighter colour I'm going to put on in a minute. And then, um, ooh, what was that? That's a nice colour. I think this is a little Rembrandt past pastel. You can get a nice little set of uh, 12 or 15 pastels from Lawrence's. The Rembrandts are actually quite good value for money. They're a little bit harder than most, but I like them. Uh, they have a good range, and as I say, I think they've got a good range of darks. They have a little pack of darks, which I think is a special offer at Lawrence's. So I'm just putting all the pastels I've used so far into one container, so I know I can go back and grab them. So they're here. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll just put those there, refer to my picture. Hmm. And now, ooh, what color is that? Let's have a look. Oh, it's a bit on the blue side there. I'm going to put it on and then I can ameliorate it with some more yellow ochre colors. But it's kind of a mid tone. I'm going to pick up these. So I'm going to work from far away closer. So this is, oh, that's a nice, very cool. Uh, warm green, it's quite nice. A cool, cool warm green that makes sense, doesn't it? 
I'm just putting some on there so I can build up uh, uh, the texture of what's going on here. I'm then going to go in with a nice, uh, this is a nice kind of warm green gold, I suppose. So I'm just putting in the far away bit here. And what I should have done earlier is actually just blocking this in while it's in my hand. Um, and over here, we've got some nice things going on here. And again, I'm at this stage, I'm using the side of the pastel. But it occurs to me, I should put in that blue sky. Uh, so I've got a nice kind of cerulean blue pastel here. Let's see how that works. Oh, look at that. It's lovely and soft, but maybe a little bit on the dark side. So I'm just going to layer that up with a lighter version and hope it goes lighter. And that was a very soft pastel. But, so a combination. So mi you mix colours on the paper. Yes, and so that will give me a contrast because that's where the light is. Talking of which, perhaps I should do some of the path. Uh, try that colour. It's a bit on the yellow side. Let's see what that's like. Oh, that's not bad. On this red, I thought it might be too dark a tone, but it's not. It's quite a nice colour. So I'm actually going to take the pastel uh, uh, in the same way uh, the path is running. So it's got these kind of black ruffy bits in here. Lucky fingerprints. Quite good to have baby wipes handy or uh, kitchen towel. Um, and one reason I really don't like blending with pastels, it can be, uh, it's quite popular in America, um, that you blend things to death. Uh, you can use tissue, you can use kitchen towel, you can use Q-tips, they're quite good. You can get those little, uh, what's they called, tron tron tronchons or something, little uh, paper sticks that you blend pastels with, but then you lose the dynamism of your drawing strokes and the colours you're using. And then here, uh, here I've got quite a nice light colour here. And I'm just going to go backwards and forwards. I think I want to do is peel the paper off. So I get a nice big block. So I'm just looking at this nice light colour here. And again, it's going the same way the, uh, the path is. So take your strokes the same way the thing is. Um, and then, not much happening over there. Uh, and then I've got this nice green here. It goes up there. Up there, I've got some green over here, got some dark green there. Let's grab some dark green and put it in here so we know what we're doing. And I'm just going to try and build it up. So that's where the shadows are. And you can get very impressionistic um, doing pastels uh, because you're putting discrete colours on the paper. Ooh, this is a blue. I think that's a bit more radar. Green. I just want that in there to be indicate where the shadows are. I want that dark there and over here too. And perhaps a bit over here. So I'm putting this is layering up, so I want to layer up my pastel. So this actually goes over here in a big way. So again, I'm just putting this on to be a tone, but you will have nice uh, bits of it peeking through your work. It doesn't look like much now, but I'm sure it will all come together. Uh, and then I want to pick up my, um, oh, this is a nice colour, this is kind of a uh, uh, raw sienna kind of colour, so I'm just going in here, catching the edge of my path, and this is so soft, it's filling up the paper. With pastels, you find, sometimes find you fill up the paper. Uh, there are no more pores in the paper to hold pastel. I'm not there yet, but some of it's starting to do that. A decent white. I'm just going to go in here and add a little bit of white to this. And you see, so I'm layering up colours. I put on that warm yellow ochre colour, and now I'm putting some white on there just to get the idea of that, the sunlight on the path. Yeah, what's happening over there? We've got a little bit going on there. You can see the bright white. It's very bright, but to layer it up with other colours works quite well. Right, better start bringing this together then. Here's my queen of things. Oh, I'll put them up there. 
And the softer the pastel, well, the cheaper the pastel, the more uh, chalk it uh, produces, but also the softer the pastel. And here again, I want that contrast between the light and the dark. So I'm using this dark purple to be that light. And this is starting to fill up the paper, so I don't want to go crazy. I just want that tone in there. And again, just over here, that tone over here, and that is filling up the paper. Uh, so then I want to explore my darker greens. What is that? I think this is sort of a hooker's green. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's been on the blue side. But again, I just want to build up those pastel marks within the dark here. Let me get on the blue side. Let's hope if I put some yellowy green on top, it'll be all right. What you can do. If you get serious about pastels and want you to do them, you can fix them as you go along. But I'm a bit against fixative on principle because it always seems so poisonous. Uh, so perhaps use hairspray. Uh, that works very well. And I'm just exploring the different kinds of greens I've got in my life. So I'm just going in here with this one. This is a bit better because it's slightly less blue. But I want to keep those dark passages there. Yeah, I've got going in here. Let's path. So now I'm starting to use them on the side to actually indicate the texture of what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Again, in there, so that's the shadows there. And there's a shadow here, and that goes there. And again, we've got something, something over here. And we've got some darker areas in here and there. And then I'm going to up this really nice bright uh, yellowy green and start putting in some areas of the light. Starting far away but over here we've got these passages of light where the light's hitting this tree here. I just think this is the lightest light I would want in there. So that mixes in there like that. And it can be quite quick doing a pastel because you're using the side of it. You can just block things in. So it's like using a big brush. And there, uh, where's that olive green gone? Let's try a bit of the olive green because I don't want it to be that bright light all over the place. I've got this nice olive green in there. And that's over here. It's a bit more sympathetic. Over here. Looking where those trees are, we've got this grass here, and um, over here, that. Oh. over here, so again, layering up colours. So I want this nice olive green, I think that's closest, one of the nicest uh, uh, greens. It has got too much blue in it. And over here, let's see what's going on in the picture. Ooh, look. Some kind of reflective light on this tree here. Oh, look, that's got to look at the picture. I can go in there and here. And there's some lighter passages. So I suppose this is my mid tone green. So I've got darks behind and then I will put lights on top. So here. And then we've got something there. Again, I want to block things in. So, <clears throat> and you can break pastels. Uh, they still work, even if they are broken. Um, but when you unveil a new pack of pastels, they are just lovely. All these pure colours, and they will look beautiful. And then they end up like this. <laughs> but it's good to keep them in order and organised. But um, I don't know if I've told the story of this nice American pilot I met once, and all he had was just this mania of buying pastels. Um, and he wanted to learn them really quickly, but he didn't really oblige. But it's just uh, just beautiful. They're just beautiful. And he would just buy endless, endless pastels. Again, I think, I think, is it black? Yes, I think it is black. And I would hesitate to use black in a painting, but because I just want this dark tone, I want some dark passages in here just in contrast to what's going on. 
Now, I think I've got the darts right. Uh, I'm just thinking there's one or two twigs here. Let's so have to put a twig in. Maybe a twig there. That's a very hard castle. I don't know what that was. And some charcoal. Yeah. Oh, here we are. That's not work. There we are. A few twigs. These twigs, twigs. We can go in there and add the twigs. Now, I want to start working on this area. It's rather undefined. Uh, so I'm going to use my lighter colours. I'm actually going to use uh, this one, I think. This is one. No, no, that's not the one. But I want to. This is kind of the base colour of this lovely summer meadow effect. Yeah, I want something a little bit darker than that. Let's try this one. Oh, I don't know what the green's like, but I'm going to put, put it in as a kind of base colour. And then I'm going to start adding the textures of things. Mm. Over here, get this background kind of defined. It's kind of a bit of a down over there. And then I want that little bit of purple and blue and blue. Just to add a few little darks in here for the shadows that are going in the meadow. Yeah. I'm just going to have a bit of a squiggle around, so at this point you can add a little bit of texture for the darker areas. Hmm. Maybe a tiny bit of purple. Just almost a little bit darker. So we've got this nice dark passage here with the light in front, so I think I'm going to use purple for the dark behind because that will ping off the yellow. And then... Yeah, I don't know what it actually says. The olive green. So this is a De La Rona pastel, and they will have uh, the same names of um, uh, colours that you know, and they will have various tones in that. I don't know if anyone has them anymore. Uh, Cornelius in London, you just pull out a drawer of all the blues, all the phthalo blues, and sort of lots of different tones. Uh, so this is a nice old pastel. They're in between uh, the Inscribe and Hardness uh, or Rembrandt. They're both quite hard. Um, <clears throat> but uh, they are really nice. And they're smaller, as you can see. So these big, chunky things that's all handmade, they're quite hard to use sometimes. But this is ideal. Ha, ha, ha. Let's do some more. Good. That's all getting a bit full. Uh, so here, I think I want a little bit of olive green here for some dark areas. And over here, so this comes down here. And over here, ooh, oh my God, that's working. Uh -huh. Wow. That's a good colour. There we go. Right, now I think to start bringing it together, I want to add some areas uh, of lightness here. So I'm going to look, so this is, uh, I suppose it was, this was taken in August, so I've got this light area here. And let's have that contrast between light and dark. So we've got this nice idea, oops, that's getting too full. And maybe some actual yellow. It's not that bad. Oh, look at that. Fabulous. This is a lemon yellow, I think, which is working. So I'm just working on building up this area here. I've got some yellow ochre somewhere in my life. That could work. I've got a few little things here. I should wait to put those on later. And this colour. And I want to block that in. Again, I want to get this light in here. There's passages of light. This is going to be a bit hard. Whoa! And I filled it up. And I want to put some nice green on top of that. I think. Mix 
this on the paper. And then over here, this area of things happening. That's coming together, I'm encouraged. That's the same colour I just use. Oh, let's try this one. This is this nice lighter colour. So it's a similar colour but lighter. And I can actually almost create the grass and the texture of what's going on here. Got something here. And the advantage of uh, working on red because I know this is a green scene, you're getting that colour pop, that colour mixing that you get with um, colour theory. And I will often recommend people paint acrylics on different colours, uh, just so you're not doing it on white, which is always a good thing, but also that you're using the background to your advantage. So where it pokes through, it has this little visual ping. And over here, over there. Just making sure I'm recording. Another <laughs> terrible gap. Oh, look at that. Oh, maybe that's a bit too strong. So I just want to go a bit more meaty colour and have some meaty bits here and in there and varying this colour of this uh, the meadow. I don't just want the gold to be green. And actually, I had a bit of a success at some point recently by using orange. Ooh, okay, yep, yep, yep. So when everything's getting a bit green, I like to start thinking of impressionists and what would they do? What would mine do? So I'm just putting a little passages of orange in here. Oh, maybe a bit too much. But just to zing it up a bit. Against here, ooh, maybe put a bit more texture in. Now I want to resolve that area there. <clears throat> so again, Looking at my picture, there's some nice kind of yellowy ochre passages in here. So I don't want it all to be just green, otherwise it would look very dark. So this is like the yellow ochre, which as I have it in my hand, I might nip in there and do that. Um, and go on white on top of that. Uh, <coughs> so a bit of yellow ochre, oh, there's a bit more over here, so let's put some on here. And just here, I don't know if you can see, you can't see the texture of the paper anymore, so that means that the paper is filling up a bit. So I've got to be careful, I've got to be a little bit more sparing. So over here, so this is the yellow ochre mixing with the blue that's already there. So, and then here I've got this colour here, which is kind of a light green. Going up here, over here. And so I'm going to pick up some yellow. Mm, I think that's a very pale. Oh, that's probably white. I might use that later. Um, let me try this one. Oh, there we go. That's got that zing to it. So this lovely fresh green just here. Work in here and sort of the camera's walking around a bit. Um, it's hard to not make it wobble, I'm afraid, because I'm pressing a little bit hard. Just going in there, picking up these light areas, having a bit of a squiggle around, squiggle, 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 and over here. So, here we've got some. Bits of green that have been highlighted by the sun. I don't want it all to be dark and the same. And then go in here, get this part down. I don't want too much red shadow there. I want to deal with the shadow in a second. And then some making grassy marks over here. So there's something over there. So I suppose again, uh, it's like working quite quickly. I just want to, whoops, a little bit of dark in here. So I'm actually picking up this purple. Let's not make them dark green, turn up the dark green. Make sure I pick 
the back there. Amy kind of dappled shade that's going on this part of the up here. Yeah. And you can see the colour is mixing on the paper, and that is much more exciting than just doing a dark green. So in here. Hmm. And, <clears throat> and then over here, so I want that to be dark. I'm just putting it in with the green. So it cleans off it. So I'm actually layering up tone using this purple. And now, so I've got a bit of the brown here. So I just want to go in here a little bit to just to make it seem not quite so purpley. So this is the terracotta colour. And the paper is beginning to fill up but over here too. Purple banks. I want to have this bit over here. Yeah. And then I want to put a bit of green in here. Put it there. Not going in a bit too far. Using the purple for tone, but using the green for colour. And then over here. Ooh, look at that. Come on. Come on. And I think I just have a bit of a scoop around here. Right, let's start bringing it all together. So again, I just want some kind of dappled shade in there. I'm actually getting quite hard to make it stick now. I'm just get inside of this one. Ooh, wow, dappled shade. It's, it's much easier with pastels than it is with anything else. So I'm just going to peel the paper off this one because I want a bit more heft to it. <clears throat> and use it on the side, but this paper is getting full now, so I don't necessarily want to do too much more to it. Um, <clears throat> I might have a look over here, and again, I need those dark colours here on the darks of the tree. So I'm doing a bit of a wiggle, a bit of a wiggle, and. I think I want the very pale, oh, no, that's a bit blue. Hmm, what's happening here? Oh, here we are, this will do, because over here we've got this nice idea of cool light. This part here, I don't know, I think this is the very hot summer, so I don't think it'll rain for ages. <clears throat> and then, just phrasing the work, go in here with this one, show what the light's up to. And again, two strands going over the purple bits in here. And you can see that just getting a little bit hard for the pastel to stick to the paper. But again, I do want a little bit more texture here. Different. And then we want some idea of what the grasses are up to here. And building up that picture. Now I think that <clears throat> that light bit is too dark. So I, where is that light that I saw? Light. Light. That needs to be lighter. So I'm just going to go over it a good bit. But that is seriously, seriously full now. I can't get it to stick. Use my finger. I'm going to do a and told everybody not to use their finger. Uh, oh, that, my finger's filthy, so I'm just going to get a bit of a kitchen towel. <coughs> just a bit of a smush. Ah! So, where's that white again? I want that light. I want it really bright. Still in the day now. I mean, never mind. Should have left well enough alone. So I might just use this again. I might have to compromise because I think this will sit better at the top. No, it doesn't. Rats! Blue. 
leave it. Yes, this is too cool now, so nothing's sticking to the paper. And I'll show you what not to do. Well, okay, let's pluck up the trees and then you might not notice. So, picking up this nice color here. So, I'm going to pluck up those fluffy trees in here. Whoops, and come up with them again. Just wiggling around, trying to create the idea of trees. And there we go. I think I want a nice cadmium yellow colour. Yep. Whoa, there we go. That, that's a bit of zing, doesn't it? Over here. And again, the paper's getting full, so I'm going to leave that in a minute. But if I make this up over here, I still have a few other colours going on. Like that orange, which was quite successful. And using the side of this very soft plastic, I'm just going to put a few bits in there. <coughs> and let's stop moving, let's stop moving around here. Let's turn them upside. Some nice shapes of glasses here, which I think are nice and yellow. But then again, I think I want some of this green going on. And Few little bits over here. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Getting the idea of something happening here. Mm. And we've got this nice, yeah, where's my nice colorly green color? Yeah. Making these shapes. So it's not all just dark. Whoa! Now. Oh, that's the right one. So what I want is a little bit more of yellow ugly colour, I think. Just to vary the colour a bit. Nice to the whites. Let's try the trouble with pastels get really mucky and sometimes it's hard to tell what colour they are. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm looking for my burnt sienna. There we go. So I want some variation in there. And yeah. And now I'm at the stage of fiddling. It's tidying it up, really. Um, a bit of purple, a bit of purple. Just to find a purple shade. But it's hard. So it is quite good to work from dark to light here with pastels because I'm finding it hard to get that purple to be dark just there, and it's mixing with the light colours I've already applied there. And maybe, hmm, I think I need a little bit more light just here. So this is this quite a light lemon yellow. Just a bit, but again, the paper is getting full. And there's not a lot I can do about that. I just might expand this part a bit. So I get a bit more feeling and perspective, but this is, but you can see the paper is now full, so it's hard to get the pastels to stick. So I suppose pastels need a little bit of a light touch. I'm about to add a bit of texture. And then over here, which I, there we are, I seem to have neglected. But, can we yellow? I think we can do it. Oh, gosh. And a little bit going on here, here and there. So I think I'll call that day. Apart from that, the mistake of my sky. It's all worked quite well. You can see that, so I have shown you, the pastel paper gets full and you can't apply any more pastels. So just be wary of not uh, using too many pastels on the paper. Light touch, blocking in, and have a textured paper. You notice that a lot of pastel papers, oh, no, that's the color I was looking for. A lot of papers have a lot of texture. Uh, I think the one I like, Canson, that was the one I really like. I think this is Canfood, which is not quite the same. I 
haven't seen that in some of my pages. It was always quite expensive, but it had a lovely sort of honeycomb texture. Maybe. Uh, we've got any marks that really annoy me. Oh dear, that's where my pastel was. I've just found it. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, have fun is such a nice way of getting immediately into colour while drawing and not worrying about mixing paints. And I think I might do a few more pastel landscapes because I really like pastels and I haven't really done many la landscapes and pastels and I would really like to try and do some more. Okay, so that's this week's video. Next week I'd like to do sketching people and architecture. <laughs>